tonight, I think we're just talking about the basic meditation technique, right? That's right. We're going to talk about deep meditation, how you might begin it, where to get the resources that you need to, to get off on the right foot and head in the right direction without causing any damage and really start opening yourself up to some greater possibilities in the world. Um, we're talking to Yogani here on 1360 thesource.com. If you want to check in with us, we'd love to take your phone calls. Yogani standing by for that at 877-345-3779. That's 877-345-3779. Or locally in the Cincinnati area, 513-749-1360. Um, Yogani's website is Advanced Yoga Practices with an S, advancedyogapractices.com, and uh, you can check that out while we take a break, and we'll be back with Yogani and more with him in just a moment here on 1360thesource.com. 1360thesource.com. Good evening. I'm Scott Fitzgerald in for Will Brashear here on Yoga, the other 98%. And this is a service of the Cincinnati Yoga School. Will has uh, taken a trip, a little sabbatical to India, so he'll be gone for a couple of weeks. But still, if you mention this radio program and go to the Cincinnati Yoga School, any of the locations where they've got classes, uh, you can get your first one for free. And then uh, you can also get packages for 20% off. Um, our guest tonight is Yogani, available at advancedyogapractices.com. AdvancedYogaPractices.com. And Yogani, thanks for being with us. Deep meditation. Uh, hi, Scott. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah. I couldn't hear you for a second there. Okay, is this better now? Yeah, I can hear you fine now. All righty. Um, our telephone number, if you want to, want to ask Yogani a question, and this is a rare opportunity, this being the only, only the second radio appearance that you've ever made. Is that correct? That's true. Okay. That's true. Well, it's, we're, we're, we're honored to have you on. 877 345 3779 is the telephone number. Yogani, how do you get started in deep meditation? What's the very, very first step? Well, the first thing to, to know is that it's very easy, and we're going to take advantage of a natural ability. And we're going to use two components. The first component is what we call a mantra. And everybody's heard the word mantra, and uh, in the context we use it, it means a sound that's uh, a sound that's used for its sound in mind, not not speaking it, but thinking it. Um, and we take it for its sound, not for its meaning. Now, the mantra we use in AYT is I am, which in English is spelled capital I and capital A-M. However, we are not meditating on the meaning. We're meditating on the sound, so you can spell it just as easily A-Y-A-M or anything else that comes up with that sound. In fact, if I hadn't spelled it, it would just be a sound, right, right. that we're talking about on the radio. Uh, and the other component is the method. And the method is a very easy procedure for taking our mantra, I am, and refining it in the mind and in the nervous system. And actually, we don't refine it. The, the mind and the nervous system refines it. So the trick that we're, we're doing is we're setting up a condition that allows the mind and the nervous system to do what it would like to do anyway, go to stillness. And the way that we do that is by picking up the sound of the mantra in our mind very easily, repeating it mentally uh, without necessarily trying to hold any particular uh, rate of repetition or length of the, the way we pronounce the word or anything like that. It can, be, it can be whatever it is. As a matter of fact, as the mind settles down with repetition, the mantra can become very, very faint and very, very fuzzy and very indistinct, and it will disappear. And as soon as we realize that we're not on the mantra anymore, then we come back to it. And we can come back to it as a clear pronunciation, if that's what's comfortable, or we can come back to it as a very faint and fuzzy vibration in the mind, if you will. Um, and that is the procedure that we do with what, the mantra. Why does, why does I am work? Well, the, the I am mantra, uh, I call it a universal mantra. Uh, there are you know, thousands of mantras out there, and everybody's always asking me, well, shouldn't I use this mantra or that mantra? And uh, the fact of the matter is you can meditate on any sound that you can think. Um, uh, I chose I am because it's what I call dual pole. It has the I consonant uh, or the I syllable, if you will, um, tends to go up, and the am syllable tends to go down and it's also been around for a very long time and been used um, by many different systems uh, and it's a very easy way to approach meditation 
Nope. There are a lot more, compli- more complicated ways to do it. Uh, we do have uh, enhancements to the mantra later on in the lessons. So uh, I am is the basic core mantra, and then we enhance it three times uh, over a period of months or years, depending on the person's development and desire to advance in the practice. But the I am mantra has everything within it vibrationally, to take us all the way. And, uh, now, is when you say I am, is, is it going to? How is it going to sound in somebody's mind? Is it going to be different? I mean, is it? Is it more of like an electronic noise? More like a vibration? Is it? Should we say it distinctly? Should it just be you know real loosely, or should there be an emphasis on the I or an emphasis on the am? I mean, help us out here for those. It's, of us. it's none of those. It's okay. whatever's comfortable. It really is whatever's comfortable, and everybody's mind is a little different. And everybody thinks a little bit different, but everybody has the same essential uh, capabilities in their mind and nervous system. And so, you know, you don't, and it, and it depends on experience, too. People starting out will tend to be, you know, like with a sledgehammer, I am, I am, I am, like mm-hmm. that, you know. And, uh, and I did that myself for quite a while. But uh, you go through a clunky stage in everything you're learning new, and uh, gradually it settles down to an I am, I am, and and then it's like it's nothing it's gone so and you allow that to happen you don't try and hang on to it you just let it go uh the mind will take care of it for you so i hope that answers your question yeah it does and then when you drift off it and you notice that you're thinking about the boston red sox right or the cincinnati bengals yeah <laughs> or whoever it'll be a sad thought today yeah <laughs> uh exactly exactly you go you uh, whatever whatever thoughts come up, you just easily favor the mantra and come back. If you find yourself doing your grocery list, you don't have to scold yourself or anything. There's no judgment about this. Thoughts are natural in meditation, and we will have thoughts. We'll have feelings. We'll have physical sensations. Uh, there'll be a dog barking in the yard next door. Whatever. Whenever whenever we realize that we are off the mantra, we easily come back to it. 877-345-3779. 877-345-3779 if you want to check in with Yogani. Um, when you talked before about self-pacing, is there much to be concerned about with self-pacing in the beginning of just doing mantra meditation? Not really. Um, what I'd suggest for people who want to try this technique uh, right away is to try a 10-minute session and uh, give you, allow yourself a minute or two to come out at the end. Rest at the end is very important. Uh, obviously, we can't talk about everything here tonight, but right. uh, you can go on the website and uh, read about how to do it. It's right in the beginning of the lessons. Uh, and there's uh, two of the books also provide detailed instructions on meditation. So, um, but you can try, you know, for 10 minutes. The, the regular routine would be 20 minutes twice a day, and that's discussed in great detail uh, in the lessons themselves. Um, there's another thing I want to add, and people are probably thinking this, well, how do I sit? Do I need to tie my legs in a knot? That was my next on, question. And sit on a rock uh, or what? That's later on. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> well, I don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't sit on a rock either. But. Uh, no, I think uh, it's very important that people be comfortable uh, for meditation, and this, again, sort of flies in the face of what's traditionally taught sometimes, but as comfortable as you can be in a chair or on a bed leaning against a pit up pillow, if you want to keep your legs straight, that's okay. If you want to, you know, fold them Indian style, that's okay, too, as long as you're comfortable. It is good to be, you know, more or less up straight because if you try and do it lying down, there's a tendency to go to sleep. And uh, so uh, we'd rather avoid that, uh, want to keep the mind uh, active and, and able to do the procedure. Now, if somebody has a medical condition that has them laid out flat, then fine, by all means, you know, do that. But just sit up comfortably if you're able to do that and use back support if you, if you like. Uh, most people do. 